Hello, uh, welcome to WS2 Streaming Integrator Webinar Series. Uh, this webinar will be discussing about ETR processors using files and CDC. My name is Ramindu De Silva. I'm an associate technical lead in WSO2. Here with me, Lasanta Samarakon, senior software engineer in WSO2. So, this agenda is uh, we'll be starting about uh, talking about WS2 Streaming Integrator and then we'll talk about uh, what's ETL and how it's been changed from traditional to modern ETL. And then uh, we'll be talking about WS2 Streaming Integrator, how it has handled modern ETL requirements. And then we have two demos uh, on file processing, which is integrating with the database, and then a demo on change data capture, and then we can have a QA session. So when it's come to uh, WS2 Streaming and Streaming Integrator, uh, we'll be uh, briefly discussing about Streaming and WS2 Streaming Integrator in this webinar. And for further information, we have already done a webinar on empowering enterprise integration with Streaming, and it is already posted on YouTube. I will give the link on this uh, after the demo. So when it comes to uh, integrating and streaming, there are two main functionalities. One is integrating streaming data, and then the other one is acting on streaming data. So when it comes to integrating streaming data, there's uh, integrating data streams with various destinations, and then integrating static sources in real time as streams. So when integrating data streams with various destinations, we have several sources as in cloud and data sensors, uh, various streams such as Kafka streams, ActiveMQ, and those all comes to the streaming integrator and there will be consumers expecting those events in a streaming manner. And then there can be expecting a converted events to our standardized events through this system. And when it comes to the integrating static sources, the main static sources that uh, have in mind is databases and file systems, and those are static data sources. But when using uh, streaming integration, most of the endpoints will request the data as in data streams. So what streaming system does is, it can generate streams out of these static data sources and inject those streams of data to the endpoints. And the next is acting upon streaming data. So in the modern world, there will be lots of uh, real-time decision-making with regards to the data that we receive. So a streaming system has to notify alerts and do various calculations before publishing it to the end sources. So after that, the data should be able to go through API calls and the data should be going through SMS and emails as alerts. And also there should be already aggregated data for reporting. So that's more like the two basic functionalities on streaming integrator. So when it comes to WH2 streaming integrator, we have various sources and endpoints supported. So when it comes to sources, those can be message streaming systems and software and data sensors, and it can be a cloud or traditional data sources such as databases and files. And with those data, when it comes to the streaming integrator, it can transform, correlate, enrich, and also aggregate inside streaming integrator and can be sent out to the endpoints. Also, the streaming integrator can trigger integrations with the WSO2 micro integrator as well. And then all those data also can be stored in databases and also it can compute aggregation and also store those in in memory or in databases. And the consumers or the users can use the REST API that we have provided to fetch data on demand. And when talking about WS2 Streaming Integrator, the CD is working as the core component to do the streaming processing. 
So WS2 streaming integrator is powered by Siddhi IO, which is an in-house stream processing engine. And Siddhi is a SQL-like language, which is easy to use and which is easy to understand. So we use Siddhi to construct the business logic in WS2 streaming integrator. So for the more information, you can refer the Siddhi query guide. So this is the Siddhi query guide. You can search it in Google and go to this page. This has several sections that you can use when you are developing Siddhi apps. So let's go and talk about ETL, the traditional ETL and how it has changed to the current state of ETL. So when it comes to the ETL, it is extracting, transformation and load. So in traditional ETL, it was used mostly to move data across three locations. It's either from files, operation databases to data warehouses. And it processed in batches and also ETL tools were plugged in ad hoc manner. If you see this diagram, it's mostly a messed up diagram when you just look at it. And all those application and the databases has to be plugged in ad hoc manner. So if a new requirement comes in, a developer has to do everything from the beginning as in even though the business rule or the transformation is an existing one he has to redo it again because of this particular architecture so the disadvantages sites was proceeds in batch fashion so it and it cannot do real-time analytics and it hard to evolve with the new technologies so when it comes to the current state of etl so the organization are usually want to take decisions regarding the real-time streaming data. They need to integrate distributed data platforms. And also because of there are many data platform, the data sources are heterogeneous. So that has to take into consideration as well. So in this current state of ETL, we have to plug in several types of data sources. It can be files, it can be databases, and it can be Kafka or other sorts of sources. And the thing is that these sorts of data sources have different kind of data formats. So that all has to be gone through a data mapping layer, which standardize the object for further processing. So even though there are, there are several data sources, we only have to write one business rule or one execution program just to convert and transform this data. And after the transformation, it will go through a data mapping layer and then it will transform those data into several different format, which is requested by these consumers and published to these consumers. So let's see how we have done these uh, requirements using the WS2 streaming integrator. So WS2 streaming integrator have this Siddhi Sync source and store API for the extracting and loading functionality. So this eliminates the ad hoc architecture. And because of the use of mappers, as in source mappers and the sync mappers, those mappers will standardize these events. And then again, after the processing or the transformation, it will then again, it will convert the events that however the consumers needs those events and it will publish. And because of this pluggable architecture, because of the source sync and store API, this will allow any needed sync source store type to be implemented by just a matter of time and just plug it whenever needed and use it. So when it comes to the transformation in ETL, in the traditional world, it was only used for data transformation as in enriching and just a simple matter of transformation transformating an event but in current streaming etl the organizations have lots of requirements and mostly those requirements just can be adhered by just by transforming events so it has to be going through sequences patterns and the siddhi core is doing this all the data processing 
requirements and not just data transformation. And also we have inbuilt aggregation technology in Siddico, which calculates aggregations in real time. And whenever the data is needed by a monitoring system or whatever the software, the those softwares won't be able, won't be needing to calculate the data and over and over again to get the aggregated data because we have already aggregated data calculated in real time. So in our two demos, uh, we are using the IO file extension and IO CDC extension. So I'll be describing uh, some features about IO file. So uh, the IO file has several reading modes available. It can read line by line. It can be read using a regex expression, expression. And a binary file can be read as well. And if the user needs to read the content as at once, they can use the textual mode. And also a directory listening is enabled. So whenever a file gets put into a directory, the CDIO file source will listen and pick up that file and send out the events of that file. And also we have the tailing functionality when it, the mode is line. So whenever a file gets updated with new content that will get read and then sent through the streaming integrator. So also we have the actions after processing or when failures which is move, delete, or copy. And also we have the file managing capabilities such as copying, archiving, searching. So you can use this if, uh, as an example, if there is a logic, say, if something happens, we have to move or archive this particular file that can be done using this file managing capabilities. So Lasanta will continue on the features on IOCDC. Uh, hello everyone. So, uh... Yeah, uh, so uh, I'll start from the from where the Ramidu left. So uh, this is regarding the features in IOCDC. So, uh, so uh, we are going to see what are. Uh, so before jumping into that, jumping into the features. So let's uh, for the people who are unfamiliar on what is the CDC or change data capturing is. Actually, the change data capturing is the process of capturing, identifying, and capturing the changes to changes made to a data in a data source and uh, take actions based on that so it is uh, basically uh, applicable and uh, used in many areas in organizations such as uh, data replication and synchronization uh, business intelligence uh, alerts and uh, so on and uh, at the moment uh, w streaming integrator support cdc in major databases uh, such as oracle mysql uh, mysql Microsoft uh, SQL servers, uh, likewise. So, uh, so uh, when regarding the features in IOCDC, uh, we have implemented the CDC in the streaming integrator in two modes. Uh, as you can see, the polling mode and the listening mode. So, uh, what? Uh, let's uh, see what is the polling mode. Is as the name implies, the connector actually polls the uh, database table periodically and identify what are the changes happen so you can provide a, a particular column to be uh, washed on for the connector and then the connector will uh, capture if there are any insert or update made to that particular table and uh, unfortunately it cannot identify the identify deletes only the inserts and updates so this is the poly mode and uh, Poly mode can be used in uh, almost major uh, databases, uh, but uh, it is actually not not real time because uh, since there's a polling interval available in this, it posts the table periodically. So that is not actual real time. So instead of that, there's another mode called listening mode. So uh, the listening mode actually utilizes the native implementation of CDC in uh, each database uh so uh because of that it actually captures the data changes in real time and also uh since it uses the internally it uses the um, based on the database it uses the redo logs and the other uh available features to identify the those changes so uh, basically it can capture insert update and delete operations all three operations on that and uh, 
in the insert when you are using the insert mode we can uh, see what are the data inserted into a particular table and also in the update and delete uh, instead of whatever the inserted data we can see what what was the data before like what is the before data so uh, you can see the logos uh, at the bottom of this slide so those are the uh, supported databases in the listening mode in our case we are supporting oracle um, microsoft sql server mysql postgres and recently we have added mongodb so uh, we can see uh, a demo down the line on the on uh, one of this database how the cdc actually works with the uh, ws2 streaming integrator uh, so uh, uh, before jumping into the demo let's see what are the support uh, pro what is the support what we have provided for ETL process in the WS2 streaming integrator. Uh, basically, a streaming integrator comes in uh, an two uh, distributions. One is the streaming integrator tooling, and the other one is the worker. This actually runs the CT application. So, in the tooling is the uh, distribution we have provided for the developer. So, it has an editor, and also the runtime. So, they can. Uh, so, you can uh, you can try out the things uh, much easier. On this uh, tooling distribution so basically uh, we have uh, provided uh, these are the capabilities available like auto generating stream definition like you can provide a database table or a particular uh, data file like a json file or xml or something and then you can generate the stream definitions from out of that and also we have a drag and drop functionality for the people who are not that much technical and uh, so it is much easier for them to start with the city applications uh, and also uh, recently we have uh, and uh, we have a uh, we have a real-time statistics using Grafana as well and we are going to introduce these things uh, in the uh, near future uh, so so uh, that is the those are the support provided for the ETL process at the moment and uh, so I'll hand over this one uh, this uh, webinar to the Ramidu as well to start with the demo So we have this streaming integrated tooling. So we'll be developing the CD application using the streaming integrated tooling. So let's start with the new application. Let's give a name. Let's give a description. Let's save this file. So we have the design view. So we can use this design view to develop the application. It is easier for a beginner to SQL language, CD SQL. So we'll get a stream over here. We'll double click. And we have the generate stream option that we have. We can give a file. On the file, we can give the sample event. So to name this as stream production stream, and the enclosing event we have to give dollar dot event because uh, we have the sample event like this, and this is the enclosing element, and this will be our event. So let's generate. So, so we get the symbol as string, price as int, volume as int, and let's submit. And then, since we are having a aggregation, so let's go to our demo scenario. So what we have is, uh, we have the directory URI, which will go to the uh, file source, and we have the event.txt file in the new folder and then when the events get published to the file source it will go through a json mapper and then it will convert this event to a standardized object which is a cd object and it will go through the stream street production stream so after going to the street production stream there will be an aggregation that's what we are trying to uh, develop 
over in the, our tooling. So when it comes to the aggregation, it will aggregate using per second, per minute, and also if needed per hour, yearly, and so on. And then after the aggregation, also those particular stream event will go through an enriching query, which will enrich the street production team stream with the current date and it will go through the RDB mess store and it will store all those data which comes to the event enriched by the current date to a stream production table. And also using this store query REST API, we can retrieve those data and show what are the aggregated data and what are the data that was stored in the suite production table. So back to the demo. So we can get the aggregation and we have to first create the connection because the aggregation has to know where the data comes from. And let's say uh, this is production. production aggregation. And let's give it a store because if it's not, it will be in memory. Let's say it's a RDBMS and the JDBC URL as JDBC colon MySQL colon double slash local host colon And for this use case, so we'll disable this SSL. So our JDBC URL will be JDBC MySQL localhost. And we give the root name. Username as root, password as root, and the JDBC driver name as com dot mysql dot pc dot driver okay and also we have to uh, disable purging because uh, the seconds data aggregation will be purged by default by several minutes but so we have to use the curl command which access the rest api so we need some data for a particular amount of time so then we have to Give a projection. We'll use user defined attributes. So for the aggregated data, we'll use the symbol and then we'll add another attribute. We'll have the count as total count. And then we'll group by using the symbol value. And the aggregation criteria will select seconds and minutes. We'll be only needing the seconds, but I just added the minutes as well. And let's submit. Okay. So we then have to add the file source over here. We have to connect it. And then let's fill the file source attributes. So the move after process, uh, I have to the file file directory So it will be in the process directory. We'll just double check the location. And then we'll give the move up to failure directory as failure. And we have to give the directory URI. So directory URI will be in the new folder. 
and the node will be line and we have to disable tailing and the move after process is move and the action after process will be also move. And then because our event is in JSON format, so we have to give the mapping type as JSON and the enclosing element as dot event. And that will be it when defining the file source and let's submit. Okay. Then let's go and to the source view and see how it has been added to the CD application. Okay. So now since we have the enriching part as well, so we'll do this using the CD queries. So let's define the table. Symbol in string, price in int, volume also in int, and also our enriching column, current date in string. And then we have to give the store annotation to this table. So the type will be RDBMS. So the JDBC URL will be the same as over here. And the JDBC driver name will be the same because it will use the MySQL as well. Username will be root, password will be root. This is auto generated okay. and then what we have to do is we have to get the stream which is fed by which is with the data flows through the file source and select all those values from over here And then use our time extension to get the current date and we'll make it as current date and we'll insert into the suite production table and also just for debugging purposes we'll add a log so that we can see the all the red events from the file stream select all the attributes this will be a temp string okay so we can see there are no exceptions or errors in this CD application and let's uh, now since we have this uh, Rafana now let's deploy this application to the streaming integrator so we'll start the stream integrator. Okay. So right after starting the integrator, the demo application has been deployed successfully. And then all those five events which was in the in this directory in the new folder there was a file called events.txt as described in this scenario one it had four five events and those five events has been read and sent through the CD application so if you go to grafana we have our cd file dashboard so 
it has given some this is an on development uh, dashboard so we are hoping to improve this dashboard as well so when you say click this uh, it, it prompt us the even dot txt it has completed processing it has read lines it started time and the completed times and the red bytes and the successful reads are also available so in the overview demo it we can give the app name is demo and there will be uh, if there are several files for the particular application there can be several added lines so we can see it's complete completed as well so uh, when it comes to the rest api that i was talking about so uh, we can go and give it give this query so this will call the store query api and it uses the basic auth and the app name will be demo and query will be sweet production table so when you get that okay it says sweet production table is neither table because i think the name that we have defined is long Just uh, give a second. Let's redeploy this to the server. Let's stop the server. So let's redo, redo this again. So okay, this has to be a typo over here. So you can see the data over here. So it was a typo error before because I was using the app name as uh, in simple letters, but it was requesting for the correct name with the capital letters and also uh, regarding the data in the aggregation tables so again we have to change this to demo and we have to get the aggregated aggregation name and i have given the timestamp from uh, earlier today and from a day uh, past from today let's see so since we have like several runs at this uh, demo program so it has aggregated the data so it has aggregated by per second so we have sent uh, the data three times so it have the aggregated data for the three times in each seconds so that's more like for the demonstration about the scenario one so we have sent some events through the file source throughout the mapper 
and then we have gone through the stream production stream which has enriched the query and stored to the database and we have used the curl command from the rest api to retrieve the data and also we have aggregated some data and also retrieve those data using the store query rest api so lasanta will go through the scenario two hello again everyone uh, so uh so in the uh, scenario two uh, that we are going to demonstrate how the cdc source can be used within the streaming integrator so uh, for that uh, as you can see uh, we are starting from a uh, uh, sql survey instance so there we are there is a products table and we are going to uh, do some insertions and updates on this uh, sql server data and uh, once uh, so after that within the streaming integrator itself we are going to utilize a cdc source uh, connector for us uh, so that the cdc source connector can uh, listen to the sql server changes and then uh, those changes can be passed into the streaming integrator core like uh, these data basically uh, coming as a key value uh, data all the rec all the change records so the uh, so that is why i have used a key value mapper here that uh, this uh, mapper uh, it maps uh, key value events and inject to the product uh, input stream so the product input stream is actually uh, the attributes are identical to the products table you can see over the uh, uh, down there uh, we have the id name category id and the quantity attributes that is same for the products table as well and after that we are using a join uh, with another uh, sql server table called categories so you can see here the here we have the category id and i'm going to enrich this category this uh, event with uh, the actual category name and then put that into the another stream called product output stream so within that instead of the category id we have the category now it has been enriched enriched and then we are going to uh write that into a file using a, a file sync available okay uh, so uh, let's uh, hop into the demo uh, uh, okay uh, yeah uh, first of all uh, uh, i need to First of all, I need to uh, start the uh, SQL server. Uh, so uh, for that, uh, I'll use a, a Docker image. Uh, so there's a, a Docker image provided from the Microsoft uh, for SQL Server 2017 later. So I'm using uh, that one. Uh, I need to have a uh, MS SQL agent uh, enabled as well, so that is why I'm uh, uh, providing this, uh, this uh, environment variable. And uh, I'm providing a SA password uh, for the simplicity. Let's uh, provide it as a uh, test at uh, one, two, three. Yes, we need some uh, enforced password for this one. And also, we need to have uh, another variable called another in around variable called ms sql pid to run this one and this says enterprise and we need to uh, we are going to use the same port of that same port the host and this is the soft.com slash slash server 2017 latest 
Okay, uh, so I have started the uh, Docker image here. You can see why it's running. Okay, uh, so uh, let's uh, first of all let's uh, prepare the schema for the uh, uh, tables. Uh, for that, actually, I have created the uh, SQL script so that it is much easier for us to uh, go through that. So all the Yeah, I'll create, uh, create this database. Yeah, database has been created, and uh, I need uh, another categories table with this. Uh, okay, I need uh, another table called categories with data. So this is the one which I'm going to use to enrich the events so you can see select our from uh, categories yeah it has five records and then uh, i'm going to create another table called products so at the moment we uh, we are not going to have any data here So there's no data within the products table. And uh, now we have prepared the database and uh, required tables. And uh, prior to that, uh, there are some configurations that we, have, we need to carry it out from the database side to enable the CDC. So for that, uh, uh, in the SQL Server, there are two commands that we need to use. The, one, uh, the first one is to actually enable uh, the CDC at the database level. So there's a uh, stored procedure for that one called uh, spcdc enable db so I'll, i'm going to run that one uh, so it started now the database level cdc has been enabled and then after that we have to provide we have to enable cdc for the particular table as well so in this case we are using the products table so i'm not going to use any role names and the other configurations at the moment for the simplicity so let's go ahead with um, the uh, table name Okay, uh, yeah, now the uh, this uh, CDC jobs are jobs have been created uh, for the uh, for the products table. So you can see the status of that using by executing this command. So the configurations are a little bit different from uh, database to database like uh, MS SQL to Oracle to MySQL like this. There are so that is basically depend on the database type. Okay, so this is the job that we have uh, created a CDC job. Okay, from the database side, uh, now we are fine and we are uh, now we need to create the uh, uh, create the CD uh, file to retrieve the retrieve data. So I'm going to create a new CD file. Let's uh, make it, uh, let's name it as product CDC app. Uh, we don't need the description at the moment. Okay, uh, I'm going to save this one. Yeah, I'll uh, use the design view uh, for this to generate the streams. So that is uh, uh, okay. so. Let's keep it like this. Seems like this required, yeah. Okay, uh, so I'm going to add a new uh, stream here. So this uh, stream is actually going to map to the uh, products table records. Uh, so I'll uh, generate from the table, from the database. Let's give the configurations in line. I'll name it as mm, product input stream. And we need to provide the JDBC URL for this one.
uh, it should be JDBC. JDBC SQL Server colon slash slash localhost port to be port and the database name will be sales. I'll copy this one uh, so for the future references that we need to have this JDBC URL in several places down the line. See, our password will be. I'm going to retrieve the tables. Yeah, here we have the tables. So I'm going to use the uh, I'm going to use the products table. I select that one. Generate. Uh, so for that, see. So uh, here we have uh, another capability that we can generate the stream from the file as well and the database as well. Uh, it, stream. Okay, uh, now we have got the uh, stream. Uh, stream generated here okay uh, so i'll submit this one that's fine and also then i need to have a cdc source to be bound to that so i'll uh, i have added a source go to the i'll connect this source to the with the stream and then i need to configure this one so it is actually a cdc then we have to provide the urls and whatever the configurations that we have already given for that products table Okay, S A table name D B O dot products operation. We are going to listen on uh, inserts, so I'm uh, providing it as an insert and the JDBC driver. Actually, we don't need that one. Uh, data source name, polling enter, connector properties. I'll put that connector property as a snapshot dot mod equal initial stream only. Uh, this connect, uh, this uh, snapshot mod is actually used to uh, just by the internal connector that uh, we are using that for the uh, DBCM. So when we are reading the data from the database, that means when we are getting the data from the database, uh, we need to have, uh, put this, uh, put in this uh, property will uh, reduce the startup time because it is not going to index the data. Uh, okay, uh, yeah. yeah, we are good. Okay, that's fine. And then uh, now we have the CDC uh, source and the stream to uh, retrieve that data. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, we forgot to put the map. Uh, map should be uh, it is key value. So I have uh, set the key value and uh, fail on missing attribute. Let's make it false. Submit. All right. Uh, so now we have this uh, CDC connector uh, defined and the stream. Uh, then we need to put that into. We need to uh, enrich this data. Join here. I 
I put a join here and also I need to have a table that is for the categories table. I put this in MS categories table. And the attribute would be a categories table would have I, I so uh, I'll show you that uh, there are two that is ID which is an int and also another one called category which is a string and also the type will be RDBMS because it is already there in the database and JDBC URL I could uh, paste the same and the username and the password would be tested one two three and the JDBC driver name would be mm, for the SQL server it is com dot Microsoft dot SQL server dot JDBC dot SQL server driver. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Uh, and also we need to provide the table name because the table name here we have provided this, uh, it as the categories table, but actually within the database the name is categories. Yeah. Okay, then we have the join query. I'll join these two this one we are going to join that and we are going to put that into another stream called stream here so in this stream uh, i'm not going to generate because uh, it is different from the uh, from what we have i'll make it as a product output stream i will be the id will be int there will be another one called name as stream then we have the category as so for the type of category as string. Now it is the industry value and the quantity as eight. Yeah, Get that done. And I'm going to link this one. And in the query, uh, I'll name it as a Q1. And the, from the left side, we have the uh, product input stream. And with the name as P and join type will be a join and from the right side we have categories table as C on condition will be P dot category ID equal C dot ID ID, that's it. And production it is a user defined one for the ID. I make it as a PID name, it will be P name category, it will be C category because it is there in the uh, joint table. And the quantity will be the quantity. Uh, I'm not going to have anything else. That's fine at the moment. I'm going to submit this one. And uh, let's put a, a sync. Connect this one. And uh, let's have a file sync for this. I'm going to uh, provide a URL. So I'm going to create a file in here. Let's see, that's the insert.txt. I'm going to open. And uh, yeah, uh, let's use CSC for the moment. All right. Uh, I think we are good to go. Let's uh, jump into the. Uh, yeah, and also for the um, 
for the debugging purposes, let's check the another sync, log sync. I need to connect this one to the input stream and uh, put this as a log. It's passed through, submit. All right, I think uh, we are good. I'll jump into the source sheet. Yeah, you can see uh, all the things available here. Oh, there's a typo here. In the categories table, uh, it should be categories, not E. Not should be e. in there should be okay here uh c category as category b quantity yeah i think it's good so let's uh, run this uh up here at the moment okay. okay start there's something went on so yeah we are good on that and uh, yeah uh, this is the uh, terminal of that uh, terminal of the tooling so you can see some logs coming up here and also i'm going to uh, so at the moment there's no record here in this directory i'm going to uh, execute some inserts let's copy all of this so it is much easier Okay, first I'm going to insert uh, one command. Uh, let's see there might be a typo or something Let's uh, try it again. So now uh, we might have one record. Yeah, yeah, that's the one record. I'm going to add another record here. Yeah, yeah we got that one. Uh, previously, actually, uh, we got that uh, unidirectional command, uh, unidirectional. Uh, it here so let's cause that error okay uh, now there might be a file ready yes we have this inserted file i'm going to tell that one a minus a inserted text okay uh, we have one record there i'm going to add another record it should be here yes we got that one Okay, uh, so that uh, this is only for the uh, insert, and uh, let's see how we can uh, uh, let's use the same for the updates as well. So uh, I'm not going to into the design new. I'm uh, I'll edit that from the source. View. It is much easier since we have at the moment we have these records. Uh, going to get a new stream. Let's rename this as update stream. And in here, we are going to listen on updates. And for the updates, instead of this one, we have another set of data. That is again a copy of that, but there is the value which has, which was previous, um, which is before the update. So that is why it is prefixed as before.
we have the id name category id quantity and also we have before id before name before category id and the before quantity okay now we have the cdc source mm, let's create another file sync let's rename this as updated i'm not going to change the definition of this stream but rename that as product output update stream i'll uh, get a copy of an, a copy of this query again for the update streams product input i'm going to read from the product input update stream and put that into the product output update stream so this is the q2 so now we are uh, now within this CD application we have two uh, two cd uh, two uh, cdc sources one to listen on inserts and another one to listen on updates and they are going to do some uh, enriching part with the categories table and then finally they are going to write into two different files called inserted txt and the updated txt uh, for uh, for two operations i'm going to start this application again now we have only the inserted text i'm going to uh write them let's update the second record update products set um, quantity equal 200 we have ID equal let's say two. So now we have two, uh, three records actually. So I'm going to update this second record to quantity to 200 from 100. Yes, now we have the updated TXT as well. I duplicate this window so we can see I'm going to tell both the tables okay now I'm going to insert some records here I put some white spaces here so you can see clearly Set uh, two records. It should come here. Yeah, we got that. And let's get two record. Uh, let's update another record. Rename this as three. Uh, it should come here. Yes, we got that. So uh, that is how the CDC works uh, with this. Uh, with this uh, uh, WC2 streaming integrator. So uh, for this example, actually we have taken only one database that is the Microsoft SQL Server. Uh, but uh, as I have mentioned earlier, we can use other databases for that one as well, like Oracle, MySQL, uh, Postgres, and uh, recently added MongoDB as well. Okay. Uh, so uh, I think uh, that is the end of the end of this webinar, and uh, let's uh, jump into some questions. If you have, you can raise. Them. Uh, so there was this question about uh, regarding the performance numbers regarding the files. So. I think we have done a article regarding that. So this is quite a, a complex scenario that we used uh, using the streaming ETL using file source, and it's more like analyzing the headers and if the analyzing headers is matched with the content then we go through the content and when we are then we are updating the database and so 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 sort of 
process. So uh, it's more like uh, it read uh, 6,140,000 records. Its file size was uh, 200, uh, 124 MB and it was uh, around 1.4 minutes. So I think it's a pretty good performance when it, it regards the complexity of the program. So uh, that's more like it. Okay, uh, so there was a question about uh, monitoring capabilities and plans. Uh, so, okay, so uh, we have this ongoing development uh, regarding the uh, status dashboards of the file systems. So we are going to implement uh, the state dashboards for CDC and Kafka. And also we, from the UI side also, we are going to do more improvements uh, in order to make the user experience better when it comes to the Grafana dashboards as well. Um, so, uh, so if you have more questions, uh, you can uh, reach to us uh, via email or with our, to our Slack channel. So, so thank you us thank you guys for joining into this webinar series and have a good day